that come along and get started with me just uh, through hanging around pick up some knowledge and we kind of teach them and uh, most everyone's okay with it and the few that aren't don't stay around that long you know it's just this job isn't for everyone and it's hard work but you know some people enjoy it and some people would rather be doing other things and that, that, that's good we can usually tell who wants to be here and who doesn't Are you guys just cutting up the meat? Yeah, about two months in. How long have you worked here? <laughs> really? <laughs> Do you like working here? You don't mind you don't mind being around the meat all the time? No, I don't eat You don't eat it? you don't eat meat? Why not? Really? But you ate it before you worked here? Yeah. So being around it being around it makes you not want to eat it? Yeah. Why? I don't know. The smell? Yeah. <laughs> you don't get used to it? I enjoy it. I don't mind it at all. Uh, I'm definitely a meat eater. Uh, I have no problem with it at all. We saw a lot of ribs, you know, back ribs, uh, just just the basics. You know, I'm basically a meat potato type of guy. I can tell you how to cook a prime rib. I can tell you how to cook a steak. Uh, ribs, uh, nothing real fancy. Nothing real fancy, but. You have to know how to cook the product that you sell because you can have the best product in the world and if someone doesn't prepare it correctly or as well as they could, they're not going to be able to enjoy it as much as they should. So I've done a couple of cable cooking shows and I've done a lot of uh, short order cooking with uh, outdoor events. I'm um, great on the barbecue, great on the grill. So I, I enjoy anything grilled. I really like barbecuing it mass producing mass cooking. It's nothing for me to cook for a hundred people. My father was a meat cutter. Well, my father, when he was a kid, you know, 10 or 11 years old, used to work in this building with his father, who was a meat cutter. And they just worked for some, uh, they worked for, they worked for a gentleman that owned counters right, right in the same area that we are. And when my dad was a kid, when he was about 12, his father died at a heart attack at a really young age. So my father continued working in the market area to just help bring food home for his mom and his brother. So through his teenage and high school years, he worked in the market as a meat cutter and a sales clerk. I was seven years old, and being a young kid, I wanted to be around my dad, so I would just come to work with him whenever I could. And from seven on all the way through high school, I went from just hanging around to by the time I was 16 or 17 years old, I was pretty much hiring, firing, and running the place. Not much is killed locally anymore, slaughtered locally. The majority of the beef is you know, done out in the Midwest. Uh, and there, you know, most of the pork is done in the Carolinas, North Carolina, South Carolina. So there isn't as much local kill, but right up the street here at Wolverine Packing, it's a slaughterhouse where they do lamb and veal. And uh, I don't have a problem with, you know, thinking of an animal being slaughtered for someone to eat it, but I'm okay with that. I've been around it my whole life, and um, it's just part of uh, it's just part of what we do here. They boil it and they peel the skin off. What, what is it? Just what kind of tongue? You don't mind holding that? No. Are you used to it? I've been working here for four years. Take okay, trimmings. We dump it up here. We'll grind it through once. There's a, there's a screw. 
here. Chill ball like that and it turn it on. There's a blade that's shaped like a cross. That's in there first and that chops stuff in the momentum force. This plate, it's got all these holes there and it pushes it through and it makes it like that. And then one of the first that grinds is there and the shape and form it and a little motion of the hand and a little bit of yeah. pressure to it, holds it together. The saw that you know, cuts the, uh, uh, the meat with bone, uh, with prime rib. Porterhouse, T-bone steaks, bones, you know, that was with a bone that's cut on this saw. Uh, a lot of the boneless steaks, like the top round, boneless sirloin, and like that, it's cut on that saw that's out there that's being cleaned right now. Today is Friday during Lent. I'm Catholic, and so we don't eat meat on Fridays during Lent, and just not eating a couple days a week is tough on me. So everyone's different, you know, that, that's totally fine. It's totally fine. There's plenty, you know, there's plenty of people in the world for us to, you know, have a good enough customer base where I don't need to beat up on the vegetarians. We compete with everyone, but, um, do I like it? Yes, I have to like it. I've been doing this, you know, legitimately 43 years I've been involved in the market down here. I enjoy people. We have the butcher-consumer relationship. We can talk to people, give them advice, help them with cooking types. Uh, being an owner of a business and being here for over four decades, we built a very strong customer loyalty dealt with you know at least three generations of families that have shopped with us regularly throughout the years. Many of our customers here have seen me grow as a young man into a you know successful businessman and they've watched my parents you know get older and we've grown old together and they've seen my kids basically they've watched them grow from infants into young adults and uh, you know, it's not just work, it's definitely a little bit more. It's not coming in and punching in at a nine to five job. There's relationships through employees, customers, uh, business suppliers that we've built up throughout the years and it makes, uh, it makes the work not as difficult and a little bit more rewarding. So are you being waited on yet? You good? If you need something, let us know, please. I have a son, and from a young age, he's always worked with me. But because of the upbringing that I had, I made it a point. It was he was a very gifted student, graduated with a three nine. Because of what I learned and being down here, and how I knew that I was also, I wasn't. I didn't take advantage or I didn't have the choices. I wanted my kids to have the choices to do whatever they might like to do. So he uh, you know, he's working in the corporate world and uh, you know, we'll see how he does. And I told him after five or six years of corporate America, if he's unhappy, he has the knowledge and the wherewithal to come in. He could possibly come in here and take over, but only after he tests the waters outside of the market here. I never wanted market or the family business to be the crutch that they had. I wanted them to go out and be educated enough and I always knew that they had the work capability to support, support themselves without this. Like, you know, you talked about the kid that was in the butcher smock out there with his parents and selling livestock out in the open market. It's what I grew up doing. So, did I dream about it? I not really dreamt about it. Uh, I knew that I was, at a young age, I knew that I was good at what I did. 
and I could make it a good living do the, doing this and raise a family and provide for my wife and children. And uh, that's, you know, sometimes that's enough. Sometimes that's enough. And it, it works for me. Are there other things that I wouldn't mind doing? Sure. But I don't know that uh, I don't know that I would be able to provide for my family the way I have. So I get three kids that will, you know, two have graduated from college and they're moving on other things. A third that's halfway through, and uh, I don't want or need for anything. You know, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with the way I live. I work hard, but uh, you know, I'm totally comfortable with that myself.